Uh, hi guys, my name is Sin Jacob Tai. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Um, I'm actually doing this video uh, from a hotel room in Nairobi. Uh, so I was sat in this hotel room and I thought I'd do a video on blood pressure. And in particular, what is the best way to measure blood pressure? What is the most accurate way of measuring blood pressure? And um, the uh, truth is that there are a variety of different ways, okay? There are non-invasive ways, which is simply like the blood pressure measurement that uh, your GP does, where he puts a cuff around your arm and then he presses a button or he inflates the cuff and listens to it manually and then has a listen to your um, uh, rec um, pulse. Uh, and that is one way or there are invasive ways where you put a catheter in and actually attach it to a manometer and measure the pressure the problem the invasive ways are obviously far more accurate than non-invasive ways but the problem is they're invasive and they can't um, uh, it's just practice not practical or safe to offer them to everyone who come, walks in through the door so largely we have to rely on non-invasive ways to measure the blood pressure now there are three ways you can measure the blood pressure okay the first is office based readings which is that you you go to your doctor the doctor measures your blood pressure or the nurse measures your blood pressure this is in a medical environment a hospital or a clinic or something like that Another way is home-based measurement, which is where you buy a machine and you measure your own blood pressure at home. The advantage of that is that it's in your environment, you're not uh, in a in an unfamiliar setting and you can do it at different times of the day. The third way is to have something called an ambulatory blood pressure monitor which are these automated machines that you can take home and put on for 24 to 48 hours and these machines will automatically uh, make several recordings both during the day and at night and uh, subsequently allow the doctor to calculate an average. Uh, so these are the three main ways by which we can measure blood pressure non-invasively. Um, the question is, which is the most accurate? And I guess the only way you would know which is the most accurate is to try and correlate it with invasive me readings. But more importantly, uh, the most accurate recording is that which best correlates with patient outcomes. Remember, the only reason blood pressure is important is either because it causes symptoms or it affects us badly in the long run. It affects our outcome adversely. Um, the truth is it doesn't cause symptoms in the majority of patients. So the only reason blood pressure really is important is that if you have a prolonged, uh, if you have prolonged um, periods of high blood pressure and you are unwell in other ways, then that can contribute to something bad happening to you in the future like strokes or heart attacks. That's why blood pressure is important. So the, the, the best reading, the best way to measure blood pressure is the way that correlates best with bad outcomes right um, and in that sense what we realize is that 24-hour blood pressure monitoring ambulatory blood pressure monitoring correlates best with long-term outcomes and therefore is the best way to measure blood pressure this requires you to go to your doctor ask him for a machine the doctor will organize a machine someone straps that machine on you go home you stay with the machine for 24 48 hours you bring the machine back the uh, they analyze all the readings taken by the machine it calculates an average and that gives you your average blood pressure and that is perhaps the best indicator of what is likely to happen to you in the future and you should really base treatment decisions and monitoring decisions are based on those readings that is the best way however that is not uh, widely available uh, it's a little bit more expensive so the next best way is home-based readings okay uh, home-based readings mean you buy a blood pressure machine you measure your own blood pressure in a situation which is familiar to you where you're at ease and then you calculate your own averages that is the second best way to measure blood pressure the worst way to measure blood pressure is office-based blood pressure uh, measurements because with those there is a significant white coat effect which means that because you go to your GP surgery he measures uh, the blood pressure it's an unfamiliar environment you're often stressed because uh, you're in a hurry or you've been waiting uh, it's a scary place and anxiety by itself will increase the blood pressure and therefore the blood pressure readings that are made by your GP are rarely ever accurate 
uh, and uh, uh, correlate very poorly with what is going to happen to you. Um, in fact, there was some really interesting research which pointed that, which showed that actually, uh, if you go to your GP uh, uh, once and have a blood pressure reading, and then you go back, uh, your blood pressure readings will fall by an average of 15 millimeters of mercury. The systolic blood pressure will fall by 15 millimeters of mercury by the third visit, suggesting that that is that white coat effect of 15 millimeters of mercury. And actually that continues to happen. So if you go by your sixth visit, your blood pressure will be even lower, partly because of this familiarity, partly because you are less anxious. Um, so you should never really get too anxious when your GP does your blood pressure and says, oh, it's high. What you want to say is, well, okay, I want more readings. I want to come back and have more readings with you, or I'll go home, buy a blood pressure machine and make my own readings, or best is to have a 24-hour blood pressure monitor and calculate an average. In terms of home-based readings, what is the best way to measure your blood pressure at home? And the answer is that you acquire one of these machines that you can uh, from Boots or a health uh, store. Uh, and the way to measure your blood pressure there is to uh, try and take um, two readings, one or two minutes apart. So you basically sit down, uh, try and be as calm as possible, take a reading, uh, ideally first thing in the morning before you take any medications and then about two minutes later repeat a recording and you record those in a diary and then in the evening again ideally before you take any uh, medications in the evening do the same thing again two readings about one or two minutes apart in a sitting position and you do those consistently for seven consecutive days at the same time in the same manner at the end of those seven days, what you want to do is ignore the first day's readings and then calculate an average from the remainder of the six days' readings. And that will give you your average blood pressure. And that blood pressure is far more important than uh, that, re that number is far more important than these isolated numbers that you can have. Remember, the blood pressure changes all day long. You know, uh, if you're stressed, your blood pressure goes up. If uh, you've exercised, your blood pressure goes up. Uh, it varies with uh, time of day. We know that the, uh, the average blood pressure dips by about 15% when we go to bed at night and when we're asleep. So depending on the time of the day, depending on how you feel, isolated readings will always mislead you and treatment decisions should not be made on isolated readings. What you want is some kind of average assessment. Home-based readings are good. Ambulatory blood pressure monitoring is even better. Um, so if uh, your doctor turns around to you and says, uh, look, you have high blood pressure. That's what you have to say. Look, I'd like to have more readings. Okay. Ultimately, your best, the best correlates of uh, the the best correlator of uh, outcome as well as effectiveness of treatment is 24-hour blood pressure monitoring. So what I would love to do, or what I do in my own practice, is if someone comes to me and they, you know, the suspicion is have they got high blood pressure. Uh, I would first, I would never base it on the reading I've made in my clinic. I would always do a 24-hour blood pressure monitor. I would calculate an average. I would then go back to the patient and say, look, this is your average. It's a little bit on the high side. Can you work on your lifestyle if there are lifestyle issues to address? If despite lifestyle issues, there's not addressed, uh, are not a uh, lifestyle issue, if despite lifestyle issues being addressed, the blood pressure numbers are still elevated, again, on a 24-hour blood pressure monitor, then one could contemplate medication but again I would monitor the effect of medication using a 24-hour blood pressure monitor or home-based readings not office-based readings